Joseph Priestley was a theologian and natural philosopher whose extensive studies and writings would have wide-ranging consequences. He was born at Burstall, near Leeds, in 1733, but from the age of five was raised at a neighbouring village by a generous aunt. At the age of 29, when he accepted a position at Warrington Academy, southwest of Manchester, he had already studied at a dissenter's academy, worked as a minister, and founded a school. He had also published Rudiments of English Grammar, a book which remained in print for half a century and was making headway into other major works on history and religion. Three years later he would decide to write A History of Electricity, and this brought him into contact with Benjamin Franklin, the printer and author from Philadelphia, who, amongst his other writings on electricity, had famously proposed an experiment using a kite. The experiment duly confirmed that lightning is caused by electricity, and Franklin, in a more safety-conscious moment, subsequently invented the lightning rod. Two years later, Priestley moved to Leeds, which during the 18th century was a flourishing centre for the production of woollen cloths. Here he worked as a minister at the Mill Hill Chapel, an important church with a large congregation, all the while continuing with his electrical pursuits. For example, he developed a machine for generating electric charge from friction, and he would build and sell these machines with his brother Timothy, who was also a minister. Later, in 1770, Priestley described his observation that the conducting ability of charcoal is independent of the type of wood or source, but does depend on the heat at which it was produced. However, he came to the incorrect conclusion that the mystical substance known as phlogiston, which was believed to be given off during combustion processes, was involved. He further assumed that phlogiston was the same substance as the inflammable air that Henry Cavendish had characterised four years earlier, and he carried out experiments with a view to change the amount of this gas that was released. Thus, this work was a prelude to his experiments on gases, of which he would publish his first volume in 1772. In fact, one of the experiments reported here was a direct follow-on from Henry Cavendish's 1766 report. Cavendish had noted that if you heat copper wire with hydrochloric acid, a gas was released that wasn't flammable and but dissolved in water. Priestley carried out experiments from which he realised that the gas came from the hydrochloric acid and did not depend on the presence of copper. He further noted that after isolation of the gas, he could re-dissolve it in water to reform the hydrochloric acid. These observations may have prompted him to optimise a method to dissolve carbon dioxide, then known as fixed air, in water to obtain a mineral water similar to that observed at the springs of Bad Piemont in western Germany. Having optimised the method, which involved preparing carbon dioxide and allowing it to bubble through an upturned bottle of water, he published the method in a 1772 pamphlet, thinking that it may have health benefits. In particular, in the hope that it may alleviate scurvy, he dedicated the pamphlet to the Earl of Sandwich, First Lord of the Admiralty. Priestley also noted that an easier, although less effective, way to prepare such a water would be to repeatedly pour water from one container to another over the vats of a public brewery, a method he had attempted in earlier years. Although Priestley chose not to patent his idea, seven years later an improved method was patented by Johann Schwepper, a German-Swiss watchmaker. Despite the best efforts of Schwepper, however, the soft drink company named after him only really became profitable in subsequent centuries. In the meantime, Priestley would continue his writings and become more well known for a variety of reasons, some of which will be described in due course on this channel. Thanks to the archive sources shown here and their contributors, and to you for watching to the very end. Hope to see you again sometime soon.